Hi everybody and a very warm welcome back to the watercolour studio. Now what have I got for you guys today? Well I felt that it would be nice to do a very simple landscape so let's roll that intro and let's see what it's all about. Okay guys, welcome back. Now, as I said just now, I want to do a very simple landscape for you. And I wasn't quite sure what to do this week as a subject, but then it suddenly struck me that by doing a landscape, I can deal with a few issues. Now, one of the things at this time of year, certainly in the Northern Hemisphere, is that we have our trees. We're just on the start of summer and all our lovely trees are fully leafed out. But what they do in a landscape is present us with a whole a raft of different green colors that we've got to look at and decide what color we want whether it's cool whether it's light whether it's dark whether it's warmer and i felt that one of the challenges that a lot of people have when it comes to painting whether it's oil or watercolor or in any other medium is deciding how to mix up some of those greens so i felt that by doing a simple landscape today it would try and show you some of the ways that i would go about doing that and help you guys out when it comes to doing your own landscapes certainly during the lovely summer months ahead of us. And for good measure, I felt that it would be nice just to throw a figure into the mix and that gives the painting a little point of interest. So without further ado, let's get on. But before that, let's just talk about quickly some of the products, some of the materials we're gonna be using in this demonstration. Okay, so firstly then I'm talking about the paper and we've got a pad of ash. It's a block, which means it's gummed all the way around. It's set a little bit there at the top. And that way you don't have to uh, stretch the paper at all. And you can just paint on it. And once it's dried back into a taut position, you can then just release that sheet off and continue painting with the next one. It is 140 pound, which equates to a 300 GSM. It is a 10 by 14. And more importantly for me, it is a full cotton so for the surface then it is a not surface that means to say that it's like a semi rough it's not a very rough surface neither is it a smooth surface so it is called a not surface all right now the black tape here is washi tape and i just put that on for an aesthetic i really quite like having a little white border around my finished painting for no other reason at all. It doesn't help with uh, regards stretching or anything at all. It is there for an aesthetic. Now the brushes I'm using as always are my Rosemary and Company brushes. These are all from the Red Dot series so they're vegan friendly and uh, no animal hair are used in the making of these. This one is a little bit of a different one. This is what's called an extended point. I've only recently got this brush and I'm still playing around with it. I quite like it, what it does, um, but I'm sort of trialing it and seeing if I want to keep using them in the future. But for the rest of it, they're all red dot. And they've got a number 14, a number 10, and a number 5, and this is my number 2 rigger. All right, so I'm going to put those to one side. You all know my palette by now, and the full color range in my palette are in the description underneath this video. So that's the palette. I've cleaned everything out with the exception of these two. I felt that it would may as well not waste them. They're gonna be using a lot of green, so maybe I can employ those further in. The pencil I'm using has got a 2B lead in it, and it is from Faber-Castell. It's a TK. 9400 propelling pencil or clutch pencil but it more importantly it's got a two millimeter lead in there and just makes it easier and nicer to do some sketching with so i hope that this is going to be a fairly simple operation to do a drawing and the and the figure and everything else so first and foremost i think i'm going to tackle the figure so let's have a look and the figure is quite small if you were to measure the reference and you look at the size of the figure and below it so i would have said that if i was to divide this almost in three a little bit there at the top and then take this and divide it in half then i think somewhere around here will be the top of my figure and the bottom of my figure and that i'm going to think i think that's my measurement i think that's where i'm going to go with this one so i just want to put in a little shape for the head 
not too large, just a simple um, oval and not necessarily a square and not necessarily a circle. And then just going to put in the shadows there, uh, shadows, the shoulders. <laughs> we'll start that bit again then. The shoulders got to go in next. Let's put the shoulders in and we're going to sort of measure around the hips are sort of slightly twisted there as the person is walking forward. I say the person, it's my lovely wife. A few years ago, we were uh, out in a place called Brock Hill and uh, we we did a lot of photography back then and we still do at odd times, but it was just nice to uh, walk out on this particular day and enjoy the countryside for all that it was worth at the time. So yes, it's also summertime when I did when we did this. Thank you. Now the whole of this image is set on a hillside and we've got some wonderful angles to the whole thing. I'm just going to suggest just a few and that helps to define the path that she is walking on up through here. Some of the angles up there and we've got our first group of trees which I'm just going to put in and suggest here with a few simple drawing marks like this and a little shrub at the bottom there. It doesn't have to be exact and please don't feel that you've got to try and uh, work out every little grouping and part of the shrub part of the tree it is just a whole raft of lights and darks at this point beyond that we have got a few other trees which i'm just going to indicate in the same way There we are. Okay, I think we are now set to do some colour. So let's get on with that one. And I'm going to go in and start mixing for a sky. And I'm going to come down in a series of maybe washes and depositing colour in, in different areas. So I'm going to mix a few of those up to start with. First one is going to be my cobalt blue colour for our sky. But what I will do is I'm going to suggest a couple of clouds in our sky. So to do that, I'm going to put in a little weak solution of some sienna before we get started. And that's going to be my first colour. My greens, however, are going to take on a slightly different look. I'm going to mix some of this green out that we had from a previous painting. But I'm going to come in with some more viridian. That's going to cool it down somewhat. A little bit of red crept in there, I saw that. But a little bit of viridian and maybe a little bit of this lavender colour just to blew them down a little bit but then I want to make them a bit darker as well so I'm going to come in with some more viridian into this M pan it's all preparation and there's probably nowhere near enough and a little bit of phthalo blue into that and I'm going to put a little bit of alizarin to that making quite a violety mix as you can see 
And I'm quite liking the way that is. And I'm going to use that, I think. Maybe even just introduce a bit of co uh, ultramarine blue, a bit more viridian, uh, a bit more alizarin, a little bit more green. We're going to see how that looks when we start applying it. If you're not sure of a color and you want to check it out, take a spare piece of paper, an old piece of paper, a failed painting, go on the other side of it and just test your colors before you commit them. Always a good safeguard. Okay, let's come in then and let's just play around. <laughs> Use that, I need to mix again. Didn't get that right. Okay, let's get rid of that. Clean the brush, come in with a little weak solution of our lovely raw sienna. A little bit more maybe, just touch some of that into there. Just bring that in there and let these all merge together because we're going to come and add other colors into it. It's not the total um, painting. This is merely the first step. And we can bring in a little bit of dark into this area, suggesting that we've got a lot of shadow, but very, very little sort of exciting green color. And that pretty much sets this whole thing off. Now, what we've got to do is wait patiently and let this dry off and then we can come back and we can start building on the figure and then we can start layering up all these lovely greens in the background and get some depth going. Okay, now this is pretty much dry. There's still a little bit of a ripple in the paper and as that dries out even more and the fibers release all that moisture, then it will flatten out. But it's dry enough to carry on the painting with. And the idea here is you can quite clearly see what happened. There's no, nothing wrong with the painting at all. But when I put this green on, this color was still quite wet. And you can see how it started pushing ahead into those areas. Over here, quite clearly, the opposite. Because this had time to dry, or certainly became a lot drier, and it was almost like layering up over a dry surface. So none of this really uh, sort of pushed ahead into the paint. So you can clearly see the effect of uh, wet onto dryish. And I say dryish, very, very damp, but not dry. And here where we clearly have wet almost into a wet surface. So nothing wrong with either way. Just be aware that you can get this sort of bleed if you go in too uh, quickly and you'll have less of it if you go in when you this has sort of been drying off for a few minutes longer but right okay enough of that let's carry on i'm going to come down in brush size to a number 10 having started with the number 14 and i want to start putting in a little bit more detail uh, into the background now i'm going to come in with some dirty grubby colors and for that i'm going to be using some of uh, the schminker neutral tint with a little bit of blue, some ultramarine blue in there, gives a very, very dirty, dark purple color. Now, this is a little bit closer to the Daniel Smith's version, which is this one here. I could have used either. I'm going to come in with a little bit of red and a little bit of viridian too. I want to make quite a concentrated dark, but I want it to make it green. I don't want it to be completely yuck color. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow to that just to influence that green a little more. Test it. If you're not too sure, 
just test your color on an odd piece of paper before you go headlong in and make it. I think that's quite a nice dark color. Okay, so I'm going to go with that. pushing the brush you see that little spray of bristles there just breaks up the paint slightly on this uh, not quite smooth surface and we can get away with an awful lot there's a little bit of light pushing through here as well I don't want to lose that okay I'm going to use that but working quite fast because you're going to end up with hard lines and if that's not your purpose then you have to move pretty rapidly to make that not happen a little bit more blue cooler color into some of this here and i'm going to bring that down and it's quite essential now we get this about right around the head now we have gone in very dark very quickly and the normal rule with watercolor is to work from light to dark and if anything i have changed that rule for this painting to a point but you can do it is a guide it is not an absolute rule um once you get a little more experience with painting you get to understand that you can add these darker colors and then come back in with lighter areas tint that's what we were using but that is quite a gray so be aware of it okay a little bit of yellow into that too all right so this is still drying but i've got to make sure that the color i'm using is at least equal to that on the paper i'm going to come in and play around with some of this dark here and hopefully i don't end up with a big issue what I just don't want is that sort of regular shape that purports to go around the figure's head. And take that up into that, up there like that. I'll play around with that in a moment, but I just want to sort of break up some of these forms. Just wasn't happy with the way that went. i take that all the way through here now and just let some of that come back in around here. And so that I sort of break up that shape that I created. Very easy done. And because we are always 
painting patterns. We see patterns in almost everything. There we go. I think we just about got away with that. Hopefully, as that dries up, it won't be too much of a problem. But, uh, yeah, anyway, so let's get back to this side and let's just create some of these marks down into this foreground area. And for that, I'm just going to pop back in with a slightly smaller brush and just break up some of these shapes into our grasses as we were doing over here with a bigger brush. I suggest some of those there up into some of these shapes and forms. Slightly greener, a bit more yellow into some of that. come in with some Indian red now and I'm going to use a bit of that lavender into that red too uh, no I'm not because that's going to kill it so let's just take that all the way out the equation what I should be coming in with is a bit of some burnt sienna may even a little bit of transparent orange what I want to do is suggest the warm color of light popping across this field in places like that. The paint underneath is dry, so we're just simply leaving little layers, little suggested, and the green beyond will simply mingle with it a little bit and suggest that we've got some warmer colors in that sort of second part of the hill there. I'm gonna use some of those up into this area too. A little suggestion of that warmth in the seed heads as we come down through here and then i'm going to come in with some darker greens through there just to suggest we've got those fresher greens and shadows into those fresher greens into the grasses themselves This is where you really want to start punching up a bit of contrast as well if you can. I'll bring some shadowy marks in here. We've got lots of uh, grasses and weeds growing, thistles, all sorts of stuff going on in there. I'm going to bring a lot more viridian together, a lot more aureolin, a little bit more water. Just pop some sort of concentrated greens into this area, up into this part here. Okay, so within the next couple of weeks, I will be adding yet another video on my mobile studio with Clarabelle, where I shall go out and uh, take advantage of some beautiful weather, I hope, and do some work from Clarabelle. And I will also use that as a recce for doing another uh, tutorial on this channel uh, based on sort of the research and the sketches and the ideas born from uh, that plain air trip. So hopefully that'll be something in a fortnight to look forward to. I'll bring in a few marks through here just to finish this area off. Okay, I think we're dry enough to carry on with. And what I'm going to be doing now is start working on the figure, which I've been itching to get to. And we're going to use our number five brush. Or even our small rig. I think we're going to go for the number five. 
which I think is more than small enough to do what we need. But we're not going to be painting the light. Uh, we're going to be leaving that as the paper and we're going to be painting all the shadows. Okay, so for the colours that I'm going to be using, they're sort of duller, greyer colours. I'm going to be using a bit of red for the skin tones, but I'm going to bring a lot of lavender into that. And this, I can't recall ever finding a colour that's been so darn useful. This little lavender colour from Daniel Smith is a stunning colour. All right, and then I'm going to come down in here and just paint in. But I want to put those shadowy areas in and bring that all the way down through there. Like that. All the shadow onto that side of the arm coming down. And a little bit to the head on the face here. That's a little, gone a little weak. A bit more blue color. drop in a little, just a little bit of pure Indian yellow, just on the side, let that drop into the side of the head, and take that off again very quickly, it's just merely catching a little bit of light there onto the side, of that blonde hair, and then I'm going to come in with the colour on the neck, a little bit more of the lavender in there, slightly darker into there, or what I'm itching to do is use this extended point. Now, if you haven't got one of those, then use a rigger. Let's start off with a rigger and see how we get on. So let's come in with some more color, make enough color going on. A little bit of neutral tint into that. Now, bear in mind, neutral tint will tend to kill it off a little bit. Just come in here. I'm just gonna come in and sort of splash around, suggesting like this. And you could do this with this equally, or you could even do it with a dagger or one of those other brushes. And you can see how you can get some really fancy little marks, but you're carrying a lot more water in the belly of the brush, which is a lot of fun. But to that, I want to bring in some stronger oranges, and a little bit of vermilion red. Just want to suggest some of these uh, sort of seed heads that are sort of... So what I'm going to do now then is I'm going to come across here with a little bit more depth, so a little bit of uh, indigo this time, and uh, into our lavender. I want to suggest a bit of shape and shade into these shorts coming down here. Makes a slightly stronger look against the light areas. Bring that across there, but we don't want to lose all of the dark. Uh, all of that light gray so we're going to leave it like that and then i'm going to do very much the same just to put a little bit sort of indigo into our green color that we were using on the top just going to bring that down here and so put a little dark into some of these areas around the torso and where it's darker against the light it really does work quite nicely OK, 
So I think that's probably enough. And what I will do is I'm going to put in, once this is dry, I'm going to put a little bit of a solid colour through the bottom here. Okay, so I'm going to come back in with a number 10 very quickly, and I'm going to look at the colour closely, and I want to make it quite cool. I want a green, but I want it quite cool and shady. So I think that would probably do it. I'm just going to bring that through here as a bit of a wash, just to support this foreground uh, colour value, I think, just to darken it down, cool it down into these areas, and adds weight to the bottom of the picture. Not sure if it was the right thing to do, but I think it was. Alright, everybody, one simple landscape done. Complete with a figure just to add something extra to the composition overall and make the painting a lot more interesting. Now, I had a lot of fun doing this one, especially pitting myself, mixing all those different greens up. Whether you're going to make a, a dark one or a light one, a cool one or a warm one it doesn't really matter you've got to decide when you're looking at the scene in front of you whether it be a photograph or actually doing a plein air what temperature that green is going to be how light or dark that green is going to be mixing up the colors and then put them in the right places so that when you finish your painting reads correctly from front to back in terms of aerial perspective so i had a lot of fun doing that and i mixed up a load of different greens way way too many to sort of explain fully hopefully you can follow along with those mixes as the painting develops but if you've enjoyed this one and you've got something from it and you want to get out there and uh, do your own summertime paintings great go for it and enjoy the process and it doesn't matter if at first it doesn't work out keep playing around do smaller paintings maybe to start with so you get the idea get some of your mixes test your colors all of these little tips that i've given you in the past and during the course of this video use them employ them and you will have a lot of fun when it comes to painting your summertime pictures now if you've enjoyed this i always ask you please 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 consider subscribing to the channel and also liking the channel give it a thumbs up it really does help the channel grow it reaches a lot more people around the world who like you are trying to learn to paint in watercolor so that would be awesome to have your support and the support on the channel fantastic and if you want a lot more don't forget there is my patreon check it out have a look at it. there are a couple of tiers on there offering you exclusive videos each and every month so check that out and i'd love to have you on board as my latest patron that would be fantastic and don't forget that is still my sky course it's still 67 pounds many many hours of tutorials on there to enjoy and get benefits from when it comes to painting skies in watercolors if you want to get involved with that check out the link below and i'd love to welcome you on that course and on the course notes i am developing a brand new course right now it's all about a beginner's guide to painting in inks and washes so look out for that one it will be released in the next few weeks okay so i'm going to get set for doing another painting i'm not sure what i'm going to be doing yet but hopefully in a couple of weeks i will share that with you and you're going to get to see a new tutorial and until that time stay safe wherever you are have lots of fun with your painting enjoy take care everybody bye bye for now bye bye Thank you.